Do you feel like you're wasting time trying to figure out what to study rather than actually studying? Well, I help aspiring professional engineers like you to become sure that you'll pass the PE exam on the first try. And this is the series where every day I give you one insight, one rule of thumb, one key distinction, or one fundamental idea so that little by little you can get clear on what matters and how to focus your valuable time and energy. In today's daily insight, we're going to introduce the coil efficiency and the bypass factor, which are two related ideas. So let's imagine we have some air flowing over a coil, and we're talking about a cooling process here. So we have some entering air, which has an entering air temperature, and some leaving air, which has a leaving air temperature, which would be colder. And the coil is not 100% efficient. So even though the temperature of the coil, depending on what temperature of chilled water is being supplied and how much heat needs to be removed by the coil, that coil is maintaining some temperature. That's called the apparatus dew point, or ADP. And we'll talk about what that means and what that looks like on the psychrometric chart. But not all of the air that goes through the coil is being cooled all the way down to the ADP. Hopefully most of it is if it's an efficient coil, but some of it's just finding its way by and not being cooled at all. And the net effect is that the leaving air temperature is a mixture of this air that's been cooled all the way to ADP and this air that hasn't been cooled at all. And that's important for two reasons. First, the sensible cooling, which is determined by the delta T, is going to be lower because the leaving air temperature is not as low as it could be. It could be all the way down to the ADP. And also there's less latent cooling happening because the process line is not only to the left, but it's usually also down because you're doing some latent cooling at the same time as sensible. And to illustrate that, we can use a psychrometric chart. So let's imagine we're starting at some state one, and our goal is to cool down to some state two. Well, that's pretty idealistic. That supposes that we're going to be able to cool all the way from that entering air temperature, that's our state one, down to state two, where state two is on the saturation curve. So that would be the apparatus dew point. It's idealistic to think that that would be our leaving air temperature. If the coil is 100% efficient, it will be. But if the coil is less than 100% efficient, then we won't quite get all the way down to point two. We'll end up somewhere close to two, but not all the way there. So maybe if it was an 80% efficient coil, we'd end up somewhere around here. And we're getting less sensible cooling because sensible cooling is driven by the distance along the horizontal axis, which is dry bulb temperature. We could have went all the way to two, but now we're only going to here. We'll call this um, maybe two prime. This is, what I'll call it uh, leaving air temperature. And we're getting less latent cooling because that's determined by the vertical axis. If we come over to the right, we're only going from one to leaving air, not all the way down to the ADP. So how do we actually calculate the coil efficiency? The efficiency of a coil is given by the ratio of the temperatures. You can also do ratio of humidity ratios, although it's less common and too wordy to say anyway. <laughs> um, so the delta T that we're actually seeing is going from entering air to leaving air as compared with the delta T that we could be seeing, which is the entering air minus the ADP. That would be a ratio that would equal one if it was a 100% efficient coil. The bypass factor is the complement of the coil efficiency. It's one minus the coil efficiency. So if a problem speaks to coil efficiency, you want to think about this ratio. If it speaks to bypass factor, it's the exact same concept, but we would say that if it's an 80% efficient coil, then it has a 20% bypass factor. That's the same information offered using different words. And that's today's daily insight on coil efficiency and bypass factor. All right, guys, I hope this video was useful. When you're ready to start putting these ideas into practice, head over to mechanicalpeexamprep.com. There are tons of original practice problems with detailed video solutions that are easy to watch. And the course previews are free, so go check it out. And until next time, Happy studying.